Okay, for our third interview, for our third part of this podcast, I've got Tim Downey. So okay. thanks so much for coming along, yeah, Tim. Yeah, you're welcome, John. My yep. pleasure. And uh, I've been wanting to sort of chat to you, particularly over the last year or two, because um, I've known you since 2007 when I did my the first race, and we've uh, kept in touch, and we've been into lots of different races. So I was looking forward to try and get a bit more information yeah. about your running. So to start with, maybe you could just introduce yourself. I'm sure lots of people will know who you are, but maybe there's some that don't. Oh, well, me, what can I say? Uh, used to be a doctor many, many years ago before giving it all up to look after our children. And my wife was a full-time doctor. Um, Running-wise, kind of got into that um, oh, in my 40s, I think, just looking at what is to lose weight. And I started off running on my own, working for a bit, giving it up, starting again, giving it up. <laughs> and then uh, eventually kind of fell into the Troon Tortoises, where, where, which is where I met Ian Beattie. And it's through Ian Beattie, really, that uh, I got into ultra running because uh, you know, he was at that stage, was had already run the West Highland Way race. And uh, when you meet somebody and you find they don't have two heads and you mm. think, start thinking, well, maybe it's possible, you know. And uh, so he was he was the one uh, first man to kind of inspire me to have a go at uh, ultra racing. Yeah. Uh, so what was your first ultra race that you you did? Uh, I think my first one was the Speyside Way. This was in the old days when it was run by Don Ritchie and uh, finished in the Spey Bay Hotel. Um, and that was just 50k. I'd, I had done a couple of marathons by that stage and I mm. tried to run it like a marathon, you know, sort of hard from start to finish. <laughs> and I suffered something horrible. I think is it Ben, a ben Egan? Mm. Ben right. Egan goes over. Um, so how far is that one? It's 50k, 50K that, back right. in those days because yep. I finished at the hotel. And you know, it's fair hill in the middle of it. In fact, I think at that time point it qualified as a long distance hill race. Right. Um, and then uh, on roads and roads and roads, and then finished off on this cobbled road. And at that time, I think uh, I can't remember what I was wearing my feet, but my feet suffered so badly, and I never, I don't think I've ever had pain in my feet like <laughs> it. So, um, but it annoys me to this day that I, I think I, I can still remember my time, and it was like four forty-four and forty-eight seconds, and those extra four seconds really annoyed me. You know. <laughs> Yeah, you, you like the pattern, did you? Yeah, yeah. and also yeah. when I got there, Ian had, Ian and Beatty had been running it as well. And he had used all the hot water, and there was no hot water left in the showers. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what year was that then? Uh, well, I can't quite remember. It was before my first West Island Way, which was 2005. Right. So I probably was about 2003 or four. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, in that time, there was probably very few ultra races in Scotland, weren't there? Probably yeah. a handful, do you think? Yeah, they, that's all right. There weren't very many. I mean, uh, the devil was around at that point as well, and that was one of my first ones. I, uh, probably my second yeah. one that I did. Was after. that in June rather than where it is now? Was it? Um, it's no, moved around no, a bit, it's, it? it's mostly been August, uh, or August, I can't remember when it is now, but it's, yeah. it's usually a reasonable spell after the West Highland Way. There's only one year when it moved back to two weeks after the West Highland Way. Uh, and that was, we never knew why, that was Gary Mill moved it for reasons of his own. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, I'm sure, no, there was one year where it was before the West Highland Way. Oh, maybe it was two weeks before the West yeah. Highland Way. Yes, yeah. that's right, yes. Because the, I think the, the first guys who did what was the Triple Crown, because the that's fling right. had just that's started. Right. Yes, yes. And so they, they did the fling, the Devils, and the West Highland Way all within eight weeks. Yeah, that was the first Triple Crown yeah. that year. So it was a bit tougher then, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. I, I didn't do it that year, because I'm no fool, but uh, <laughs> I'm trying to remember the name of the chap from Dumfries, uh, old chap, older chap. Eric Baird. Eric Baird, yes. Yeah. He, he yeah. did it that year. So, yes, I was quite mad. Eric, interestingly, enough, he was one of the people that told Dario uh, would sometimes phone up people who'd done the West Highland Way and ask them for sort of your opinion on other runners because yeah. this is a way of vetting people. And he yeah. said, "Well, did I think Eric could do it?" And I, I'd been on I think one or two training runs mm. with Eric at this point, mm -hmm. and he wasn't fast, but he was very steady, and he had done an enormous amount of hill walking. Mm. And I thought, "Well, you know, if I can do it, Eric can do it." And uh, I was very <laughs> pleased when he did manage it. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, right. So uh, yeah, so yeah. that was a. Uh, and I said that was the start of the Triple Crown that year yeah, as well. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's think a little bit about the West Highland Way then, because obviously this was the mm -hmm. the main topic to, uh, for the, yeah. this podcast. And so ju just think back to that first one in two thousand and five. What were your memories of your training, your preparation, the race? Um, right, well, I'd done the Devil a year before, and so you know that in those days, you know that was kind of about the longest ultra you could do before the West Highland Way. So mm. uh, the fling hadn't started then. No, had it? no, no. And so I went on to apply and got a place, as I say, got a place in it. If, if Dario thought you were up to it, that you were yeah. up to it, that was it. There was no ballot back in those days. Mm. And I think it was that year I did the London Marathon um, as well. And I ended up, it was about a week after the London Marathon, I was doing a speed session with the club, you know, the sort of thing you're not supposed to do when I <laughs> tour 
cut a thigh muscle or something and I was hobbling around for a bit. And so that really kiboshed my training that year. So I think the longest run I did in 2005 was about 27 miles or something. That was my longest run uh, before the West Highland Way. But I was feeling good, you know, I'd been doing, once I'd recovered from my thigh injury, I was feeling all right. So, you know, and I always felt that if you don't, until you try, you really do, do not know what you can do. There's no point in going in thinking I might not be able to do this. But you think, I went into it with the attitude, until I, until I fail, I don't know that I can't do it. Mm. So that was always my attitude. You know, I'd give it a go. The other thing I'd done is my first time around for a big ultra. And so I'd got sponsorship, you know, for raising money mm. for charity. And I think even if you know that people are going to pay up whether you finish or not, that was a powerful incentive for yeah. me to keep going. So, yeah, that, that was the build up to it. So it wasn't an ideal build up. The race itself, start was absolutely fine got up to Drimmen uh, without getting going too quickly probably a bit too fast and was just heading out of Balmahar when suddenly I got an agonizing pain in my knee oh. and was could only hobble and hop in fact I kind of kind of kind of gallop rhythm you know just because I couldn't really straighten one leg yeah. and um, looking back in it I probably had a small cartilage tear or something at the time I didn't know what it was I thought maybe I had cramp or something but it was just one knee you know mm. but you know you, you're trying to rationalize that way yourself you're trying to convince yourself it's not a, 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 a stopper that is something you're going to be able to get through so I begged some salt off people and so on and sort of hobbled on and hobbled on and basically I hobbled and skipped from there to Inversnaid Mm. When I got to Inversnade, my knee unlocked. <laughs> I thought, oh, great, I can run again. So yeah. I started running and carried on up to the Drovers. And, and then sometime between the Drovers and, uh, and, and Tindrum, it locked again. And so mm. I was back to my skipping and hobbling. And basically, it carried on like that all the way. And, well, uh, alternating, alternating locking and unlocking. Lock, lock, locking and, unlocking. <laughs> yeah. and uh, it was at, I think, Glencoe that I sort of uh, picked up my support runner, got the, hobbled in there, and uh, we... Put all our waterproofs on and head off and that was the year that the race one of the years that the race got stopped early because of t absolutely oh, torrential right. rain we were heading up out of Kinloch. was that the year it was filmed that yes the, that was the, the first year distance. it was filmed closing yeah. distance that's yeah. right and uh, we were heading up out of Kinloch Leben and the sky was getting blacker and blacker and blacker mm. and it was really I would say scary it was just incredibly ominous you know thought, oh, you just knew we were in for something mm. and then there was an amazing thunderstorm and rain and all the little streams that come down across the Larg Moor across the path there was suddenly just huge torrents and we were just wading knee deep across <laughs> these things and uh, it was rather exciting and um, we got into Lundervara um Muriel had come up with a car and we dived into the car. We just put on every bit of clothing that we had, including, including on Muriel's clothes and anything else we could find. And we were sort of bundled up like, enormously like this and set off. And um, we were warned that, you know, there was some flooding ahead. And I said, no kidding, you know. <laughs> um, so, so we headed down and uh, but we got through, you know. Mm. And uh, But... Uh, and we were very pleased and it wasn't long after that that they stopped the race and I think Ellen uh, McVeigh and a few other people were just about the last people behind right. I think the last finishes were about 29 hours we finished in 27 hours something that yep. year and uh, so uh, you know it hadn't gone according to plan I'd been yep. aiming for sub 24 but you know over the lock knee and everything I didn't think they did too badly in the weather yep. so that was it was quite an eventful race that one and sounds it and then I've got your stats here in 2006 and 2007 you didn't run but I think you'd entered it is that right that's right I entered both those years 2006 and uh, I can't I mix them up a bit because one year I had a, a, a stress fracture in my foot and another year I had bad plantar fasciitis right. and I can't remember which it was but uh, it, it both affected my training so much I got to the point where I realized it was pointless turning up at the start line and I'm not a kind of person who feels you know I want to just give it a go yep. first time around yes I'd got through but this time it just hadn't worked so and I was really gutted uh, 2006 and um, uh, Dario spent a long time on the phone with me <laughs> Dario took these things I wouldn't say personally he had yeah. such a concern for every That's runner right. of the race he yeah. would phone you up and chat with you and, yeah. and if you if you were devastated he was devastated right. on your behalf you know no. uh, you felt like, uh, but anyway uh, I got over it and I, and I recovered reasonably well later in the year in fact I got to the point where I thought damn it I've still got this fitness I still want to run the West Island way Mm. So I kind of floated the idea on on on, on uh, social media, you know, so I fancy doing the West Highland Way, you know, this year, perhaps on the shortest day rather than the longest day, you know, because mm. just for the symmetry of it, no other reason than that. Yeah. 
and uh, surprisingly, a guy came forward and said, "Yeah, I kind of fancy that yeah. too." So that was Dave McClellan. Yeah. Uh, well, I was going to say to him. So I remember that was the first time I met you. I yeah. think we. I'm not sure if we corresponded before, yeah. but it was the October time that I entered the 2007 race, uh-huh. and um, we were doing a run on in the Dece- on that day. Remember, yeah. and we were going from. Um, from Drimmen to Balmahar and back, uh-huh. and we met you on you were you were you had about sort of ten miles to go or so, yes. probably a bit less. And we met you, remember, on the on the yeah, on the railway yeah, track yeah, by yeah. Drum going. Uh, I just remember my legs were so sore at yeah. that point because I hadn't really trained like you would for for the full yeah. race. Yeah. We'd done a few long runs in the dark and what have you, but. Uh, um, uh, my base fitness had been good, but you know I hadn't really put in the long runs, and I just remember that I could walk for a while, I could run for a while, and then my legs just felt tighter and tighter, and then I have to stop and walk, and then then I could run a bit and walk yeah. a bit, and run a bit, and so it finished like that. But uh, I yeah. remember you called it the way Highland West. West. Yes, that was just yeah. because it was going yes, backwards. Was, yeah. Yeah, so. In fact, I, you might be able to answer this. I was chatting to someone the other day, and they were saying, "Why do the winter people always do it north to south rather than?" Um, South to north. Have you got any reason why you think yeah. people do it that way around in the winter? I mean, there is one logical reason in that, that you're getting the higher altitude bits with perhaps the bad weather out of the way early when you're fresh oh, rather okay. than hitting them when you're tired and cold. And, they, you know, they expose yeah. hitting, you know, mm. uh, that, those areas if it is bad weather in the winter. Whereas going from north to south, generally speaking, you know, it's, it's easier going farther south and okay. uh, you're less likely to get trapped at altitude. Um, so, um, and bad weather that way so that that's the logical reason but we didn't do it for any logical reason I did it just because as if you do it in midsummer you go from north yeah. to s- south to north in winter you ought to go north to yeah. south you know yeah. but that was that was the that was as far as my reasoning went yeah. at the time and as far as you know was that the first time anyone had done it who was uh, involved with the I, race I'm uh, it's probably the first well, I don't know about the first documented time but I'm sure there must be other people yeah. who've done it before yeah. uh, people said oh it's not been done before and uh, okay. but, yeah, I'm sure it has you know they, they so it meant that you were record holders then <laughs> who yeah. knows who knows <laughs> who yeah. knows but you know uh, I, I'm sure uh, lots of people have done it at other times so, yeah. but you know it's probably the first time when social media was a thing yeah yeah, but it meant though that you did get injured later on, didn't you? And didn't do the two thousand seven. Well, that's race. right. Yeah, into the two thousand seven, and then didn't yeah. get, make that one. So yeah. that was that was. But then two thousand and eight, you came back, and yeah. that was your 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 fastest time so far. Yes, yeah? and yes. you still want to beat that. But uh, yeah, oh, absolutely. Yes, yeah. You know, never too old to go for a PB. Yeah, that was yeah. not in the ultra stuff, you know. But <laughs> so how did that go in the two thousand and eight? Then do you feel as though you got most a lot because you you improved by what almost five hours yes yeah so you must have got a lot right a lot better. yeah i mean i think my fitness had been good in 2005 but uh, apart from that my injury and, and and the locked knee business which kind of knocked the wind took the wind out of my sails but 2008 that was that was good um just it's one of those times when when uh, nutrition seems to go right and you the energy seems to keep flowing you know sometimes uh, your stomach goes and strike and, and mm. things don't go right and you just end up uh, like feels like a death march yeah but that year you know i was able to keep running and i had the support of uh, Anne noble that year uh she was she was a great great support runner and um, and uh, it was just a huge pleasure to come in and under under 23 hours you know because under 24 is nice i, I think I mean, I, I've always, always gone for under 24 hours. I, I, mm. I feel if I, if I can't aim for under 24 hours, I'm not going to turn up at the start line. It's okay. always my goal time yeah. uh, as a minimum. And then uh, under 23 hours was the next goal because, you know, it's just nice to be able to say you start and finish on the yeah. same day. Yeah. Uh, so my next goal time has got to be to be Andy Cole's time. Right. Uh, <laughs> which, which, I'm not sure what that is at the moment, but that, Andy, that's my goal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because that, that's that's my goal for his northern traverse time yeah. as well. So he's 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 setting he's set it for the bar, us. Yeah, that's right. yeah, yeah. So and then you had a uh, 2009, you didn't run. 2010, you did. 11, you didn't. 12, you did. Yeah. Um, so was that again? Did, did you plan to do it every other year, or uh, again no, did you I, pick up injuries? Or? Uh, no, I think I just you know yeah, I, I'm not one who feels obliged to do races once again to their year. I mean, I, to be honest, I think I probably did do too many of them because I think mm. you, you do it too often, you start taking it for granted. You'd stop feeling as motivated as you mm. need to be, I think, to do it. And um, yeah, I mean, I, there's some sort of slightly, I would say, mediocre performances, but not as good as I would have liked. And I think 2012 was 25 hours, as I was there. I forget, but that was the year yep. of horrendous yep. weather, yep. and you know. You take you you, you mm. can't control these things, no. and sometimes you oh, ghastly weather. Um, but then uh, last year was ghastly weather, and I, I did better then. So, um, 
Yeah, and then just looking at your the races you did, you did have a little bit of a uh, you did less races 2013, 14, 15, mm -hmm. uh, didn't you? Yeah, again, I, I, was that purpose just to? I think I just got a little bit scattered with doing a lot of the races yeah. that I've been doing regularly. Uh, you know, I've done quite a lot of flings and so on. And uh, uh, much as I, I love the fling, it, it, the race has changed over the years since I've done it. And, and I find it less attractive for me personally, mm. uh, being such a sort of big event now. Yep. And I think also, you know, you when you've gone up and down the West Island Way so many times, you're like, I want to change yep. or do something different. Or, yep. um, so, yeah, I, I, I just kind of backed off the ultras for a bit. And um, so... Uh, and uh, only really started coming back to it uh, 2016, uh, so 2015 really was when I, that was the, when I went to do the um, Great Glen, Great Glen. Yep. because I wanted a decent qualifier for the West Highland Way. I didn't want to go into it mm. with just, you know, uh, just the devil or, or something mm. or, 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 you know, a two year old race. I, I needed something to convince myself that I had it in yeah, me to do right. it properly and yeah. do it justice. Yeah. I'd like to talk about that one, but just before we do, just in that time, we, we, you did quite a bit of cycling, weren't you? You got into cycling yeah, a bit during that time, I, so you whenever, still... whenever I'm not running, I tend to cycle more, yeah. and, if, and when the running's going well, then I cycle less. Okay. Um, and and uh, as you probably know, I had this thing called the Elliptico, yes, which is which you know, I borrowed. Yes. Yeah, you <laughs> borrowed, which yeah. it is a it is a novel machine, and uh, it certainly is is a great conversation piece. piece yes. you know. <laughs> um, but I like it because uh, it's a standing form of exercise, uh, mm. weight bearing, although non-impact. And uh, I just find it quite an interesting challenge riding yeah. it up and down. Well, I must admit, stuff. having had a go on it, I, I'm, a, I'm full of admiration for some of the, uh, the things you've tackled on yeah. it. Because you've done some big routes, haven't you? Some hilly routes. Yeah, I did yeah. the three piece sporty, which is 100 yeah. miles over, over Glenshee, uh, the Lecht, and uh, Cairngorm. Wow. And I'm ashamed to say I did have to get off on the Lecht and the Cairngorm, but <laughs> I've, I've geared it down slightly since then, so I'll probably <laughs> get on them now. But <laughs> I'm not going to do it again. No. You know, once was enough. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, because it's it's it, anyway, it's just so heavy. It take, it is inevitably mm. slower than an ordinary bike, yeah. and the and the, with the wind resistance. But it's it's just quite a pleasing motion. Quite like yeah. riding it. And yeah. so we took it to France last year and rode it up the Col de Galibier, wow. which was a uh, great fun, especially coming down. Uh, <laughs> yeah. well, that's impressive. Okay, so let's go back then. So in 2016, 2017, you definitely picked it up again. Yeah, you? I, I was um, working back towards yeah. uh, well, 2016 again. I was working mm. back, feeling so, I get putting myself in the right place, place mentally to, yeah. you know, so, do justice to 2017. Yeah. So uh, doing that great plan was that a bit of a test to see if that had gone badly? Would you have maybe rethought or? Yeah, I mean, that, 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 it, was, it really was, as say, a test for me. If, if it had really gone badly, but uh, you know, then I, I maybe would have reconsidered. But I, I, I got through it, and uh, it lost ten miles didn't go as well as I would like. I was just, that was just, I didn't like the last ten miles yeah. at all. But, yeah. um, um, <laughs> at, you know, having done it, I, I felt reasonably happy that yes, mm. I, I could put myself through it and running through the night and you know all these yeah. miles again. And mm. uh, you need that kind of. Sometimes you just need to be reminded that you can do it, and yeah. you know, and need that relatively fresh in your mind so that you know that yeah. you can do a bigger race next year. Yeah, I think for, for maybe people listening to this or watching this, would you say it's a a, a really good stepping stone for the West Highland Way? Oh, I, have to, I think obviously, so. obviously a lot of people just do the the devils or the fling, but it's a big jump, isn't it? Whereas the the Great Glen is in the middle, isn't yeah. it? It's a seventy. It is. If you want it as a stepping stone, I think yeah, it is, yeah. I think it's a great race and it's yeah. a right. I mean, I think it's a fantastic race. Um, but uh, you know, remember back in the old days, mm. <laughs> you know, the Devil Pass was the longest ultra you could do before the yeah. West Highland. Well, we all made the transition. Yeah. Uh, and and it's, I don't suppose the old 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 race reports are still kicking around that used to be on the very old website. But mm. you know, you read those people who've never done anything more than half marathons and ten k's before the, yeah. the West Devil West Highland Way. You know, so it, it can be done off shorter mm. races. But uh, it's definitely if you want the psychological uh, preparation and to feel yeah. that, you, that uh, you can do it, it's a great race. Much hillier than I was expecting. Yeah, especially uh, the second half. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean now, now they go, they. They, 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 instead of, they, I just sort of thought, you know, I didn't, didn't research it at all. And I thought, well, it's it's only 60 miles. It's, it's probably going to start at six in the morning. It's running up alongside <laughs> the, the, the canal. So it's going to be reasonably flat, yeah. you know. <laughs> and then I found out that it starts at one in the morning and I don't know, a shed load of hills in it, <laughs> and, uh, which was yeah. good for me because uh, yeah. uh, having got through that. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I hadn't really looked at it at, at all before I entered it. <laughs> So it was a rude awakening. Was it, it was a bit. It was yeah. a bit. Yeah, especially the one a.m. start in the rain. You know, but there you yeah. go. Yeah. yeah.
Now, I realised that last year was a significant birthday for you, wasn't it? It was indeed, yeah, yes, so. yes. Uh, uh, I say it was my 60th birthday, so that yeah. was the, that was the reason for the build-up from, from 2016, because as I, say, I knew I'd only had this small window when I was going to be 60, <laughs> and you <Yeah>. weren't. <laughs> So I thought, I remember going to be first D60 in the West Island Way race. I'm going to get a move on. <laughs> so yeah. that was that was my thinking. Yeah. So there you go. You see, it's all your fault. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Well, you set the bar very high now. Yeah. So yeah, I need to uh, respond to that next yeah. year. Yeah. 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 So, in, but it wasn't just the the longer ones. You were also doing a lot more. You know, park runs and uh, uh, shorter races and cross country. You've done a lot more at this. Yeah. I mean, I think um, uh, 2017 was a good year for me. I mean. I, uh, I kind of changed my outlook on running. You know, previous years I'd sort of concentrated on, I wouldn't say training, but putting in miles, distance, doing lots of training runs in the West Highland Way. In 2017, I thought, I know the West Highland Way. I don't need to do any running on it. And so I didn't. In fact, the only race I did run on the West Highland Way was the Mulgai Trail Race. So that was that was kind of accidental. Right. Uh, but, you know, I didn't do a single training run in 2017 oh, wow. on the West Highland Way. Nice. I never felt the need need for it. You know, I, yeah. I know it all, you know. And mm. uh, I, the only bit I didn't know was the new low-level path, which I really enjoyed. Right. You know, it was really nice to come across something new. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, so that was a, But, yeah, I thought, well, I'm going to do what I enjoy. And what I really enjoy is speed work and short stuff and mm. 5Ks. Yeah. And because uh, I, I can remember years ago, I, uh, um, Dario, so if anyone is asking, you know, about races that I'd done. I said, oh, I can do a 5K in under 20 minutes. And I said, well, I don't give a damn about your 5K. It's not relevant. <laughs> now, in some ways he's right, but in some ways I think he's wrong. I mm. think you, you forget your speed work and your speed at your peril and ultra mm. racing. Mm. You know, you don't necessarily need to run that fast during the race, but you need the strength and, uh, mm. and endurance that you get from, from speed work, I think. So 2017, I did as many races, basically, in park runs and 10Ks and uh, as I could. Uh, a half marathon and a marathon as well. Well, the marathon was after the West Island Way, but basically I, I, I worked hard on my speed mm. and, and a lot of 10Ks. 10K was always a distance I, I kind of avoided when I was younger. I, mm. I think it, 5K, I didn't mind the pain for that long. 10K just feels like twice as much pain. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I kind of avoided it. And so I made a conscious effort not to and to put myself forward to do a lot of this, a lot of cross country, a lot of 10K, a lot of speed. Very, not much distance at all. I mean, up to the from the beginning of 2017 to the West Highland Way race, I, I averaged no more than about 25 miles a week. That includes race, the, all the races and ultras that I did in the way. Oh, yeah. So, you know, I, th I feel reasonably happy that I've proved to myself that I don't yeah. need high yeah. mileage. Yeah. And I'd love to be able to say that everybody could do that. But, you know, everything's so individual. And mm. how much is that is based on what I've done yeah. the previous 10 years? You know, yeah. what, what I've got in, in, yeah. in my legs from the previous years. So, yeah. you know. But it also meant that you were less likely to get injured, weren't you? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I had no, no yeah. injuries last year at all. Mm. I haven't had any, well, since last January, you know, I've been I mean, absolutely injury free. Yeah. And, and that's important, you know. Yeah. It, it means that I, can, I feel I can enter races with confidence, knowing that mm. I'm going to send a good chance of getting to the start line. I'm not always thinking, uh, you know, uh, worrying about and dealing with injury. Uh, yeah. I think another thing that you really worked hard is your weight, wasn't it? Yeah, that and was that, it. that was something that you felt was going to help you. Oh, absolutely. I mean, mm. I, I think unless you're, you're built like sort of Paul Giblin, then you're gonna, losing weight is going to help you. Mm. Um, I was carrying at least 20 pounds more than I should have done. And it wasn't a lot, but you know, it, 20 pounds, you, you've had 20 pounds in yeah, your hands and had to carry lot, it for yeah. 95 miles. You'd yeah. think, I'd rather not have that. Yeah. And uh, I think because I was 60, it gave me the motivation to lose the weight, which I'd never managed before. I didn't have a good re good enough reason to do it mm. before, you know? Um, and uh, for me, having a target, uh, a goal uh, to really focus on, gave me the motivation to do it. And, um, and so, so what sort of choices did you make to, to lose that weight? How did you do it? Um, it actually was easier than I was expecting mm -hmm. because, um, I mean, I found that, you know, when I've run lots of miles, I never seem to lose weight. And so basically trying to be a little bit, bit take more careful about cutting back on alcohol. So, you know, mm. the weekends didn't get, didn't start on Thursday or Friday <laughs> and finish, uh, and you know, finish on Monday night, you know. Yeah. We, we try now just to keep drink any alcohol to, to, to sort of Saturday, Sunday or, or Friday, Saturday or whatever. Um, it went mostly vegetarian. Um, I've always enjoyed vegetarian food, mm. so that was, and it was no, uh, I found no difficulty eating more, you know, vegetarian food and giving up the uh, meat. And just doing that alone, um, and without worrying about calorie, I've never counted a calorie in my life. Mm. I didn't worry too much about portion control, tried mm. to cut back a bit on snacking and things. 
and that just doing that alone so I've just able to lose a steady one pound a week yeah. which is about ideal really right. between New Year and, and the race yeah. so yeah. that was my sort of and in your house you're the main cook aren't you really yeah I'm the main yeah. cook so yeah. that helps and uh, yeah. so I'm your house to put up with it as well but yeah I mean, we still eat mostly vegetarian I'm doing it again this year right. I mean we do eat meat and uh, I'm yeah. not exclusive about it and I'm afraid I could never be vegan because <laughs> if I had to live without cheese and eggs and things like that then right. you know life wouldn't be worth living okay um, <laughs> so yeah milk products uh, uh, and yeah. cheese yeah. got, got and is, is that something you found as you as you were losing the weight you found that running up hills and down hills just became a bit easier yeah I mean I've, I've always enjoyed throwing myself at hills you know mm. wherever there's a hill to run up then I will look for it and try and run up it and, and I've always enjoyed that and uh, undoubtedly losing weight makes it makes, makes it easier yeah. um, so as I say I think if there's one bit of training you can do for the West Island weight lose weight yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you're carrying extra yeah uh, no, that's so. good advice yeah. So let's think about the race this year then. So you finished in 23 hours 43 26. Mm. You were 61st overall. You were first male 60. Yes, so that was your, was your goal. Now, I know you were a little bit disappointed because you were hoping to get, you know, even under your PB, but the weather just what didn't help oh, last well, year. It did was. It? A, a, um, so a, were you satisfied in the end? In the end, I was satisfied. Yeah. Uh, uh, by the time I got to Kinloch, even though, I mean, I was almost a broken man, you know, I was so gutted and fed up yeah. about it. You know, I'd, I'd, I hadn't looked at my watch in ages. I had no idea how far I was. I, my, mm. I, I probably hadn't been keeping up my, my food intake and was just feeling miserable. And 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 uh, uh, a support run said, you know, you could, you could still get in under 24 hours here, Bobby. And well, I wasn't really hearing him at that stage. But <laughs> fortunately, Muriel shoved a pie and chips in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> and I sort of mumbled it down and sort of slowly worked my way through this. And I was a new man by the time I left. Right. And then we got up into the Larrig Moor and sort of hobbled along and gradually picked up the pace. And then, oh, we could do this. And then started thinking by the time we got to uh, to Lundervra that maybe I could get another 24 hours, you know, which is mm. still a reasonable goal in that weather. Yeah, definitely. And so I just kind of started running and running <laughs> and running and got to the top of Glen Nevis and my support runner was kind of, trailing behind you know, <laughs> so I said Bobby are you okay I said yeah yeah I said well if you don't mind I'm going on <laughs> so I left him right. and I went hair down Glen Nevis all the way back down to the mm. finish line and uh, so that was how I got in under 24 hours yeah. but uh, yeah it's amazing where the energy can come from if you get know. the nutrition right yeah. Yeah. Um, even when you feel like you're completely dead and done in mm. it's uh, it's always those bit those moments are magical I always are. feel yeah yeah i think it's funny isn't it maybe it's sort of uh, your mind as well isn't it when it knows the ends inside it <laughs> almost takes all the brakes off doesn't it and lets you just go oh, and absolutely you, you all the time your, your brain is trying to work it right i've got this much energy to burn yeah and I've, <laughs> I've used up so much do i have enough left to get to the end yeah you know so you're always doing that you don't know wait your brain's doing those sums yeah. for you and what you yeah. eventually get to a, point, a tipping point when you know that you've got enough to get to the end and yeah. then yeah. you can go and particularly with the, the last three miles from the top of that yeah. you know yeah. fire road it is yeah. very runnable isn't it if it's you've got anything runnable. left it, it just depends how bad your feet are yes, how quickly you can go if, right. you, if your feet are a mess then you're, yeah. you know it's, it's a painful run yeah and it's always painful but i mean you know sometimes yeah. you're, you're enough pounding and you stop feeling the pain you just see the endorphins get you to the yeah. end yeah I just wanted to pick up as well because I know you've been involved in the race for all that time and not just as a runner the years that you couldn't run you helped yeah. marshal so yeah. you, can you just give us a, a bit of a perspective on what, what's it like to marshal and be involved in the race when you weren't running oh it, it's always been a great experience to be part of the race I mean uh, and, and I've certainly planned to do some more of that I mean probably next year because I won't be doing the race next year I don't think I wasn't going to do it th this year because, but curiously enough you know I, I've always kind of thought for me it, I've always had a very minimal crew, you know, my support runner and me, you know, the three of us, and mm. often we've done it just with that. But um, we realised that it's really not terribly safe and good idea to have one person driving all the way through. So last year, my daughter's got her and her boyfriend have a camper van. So uh, they offered to crew, and mm. uh, they turned out to be very good at it. <laughs> uh, and uh, no disrespect to my wife, who's been done it all uh, before, but you know, it meant that you know, she could come up later and yeah. uh, n not have to work so long and um, yeah, and get some shut eye but uh, they enjoyed it so much they said well when are you doing it again yeah. you know? <laughs> <And> I thought, <laughs> wasn't planning on doing it next year but you know the more I thought about it I thought well I didn't get the time I wanted you know and uh, I, I feel there's still a better fat time in me you know yeah. and so uh, well my fitness is good why not give it another yeah. go and yeah. uh, as I say I, but I don't think I'd be doing it again next year you know i think uh it's time to give something back to the race you know yeah. and uh, yeah okay yeah 
And so just thinking about, just, just looking back on your experience of running it the, the five times and being involved in, mm -hmm. in the races, can you give us some, you know, maybe some, some tips? But I, I, it was interesting for this um, podcast, I interviewed uh, Fiona Rennie yesterday, ah. and I was asking her for some tips on finishing around about 30 hours, because that tends to be her goal. Yeah. So if your goal is sub 24, sub 23, what sort, of, what sort of tips would you give for someone who's targeting that sort of time? Oh, golly, I, I don't know. I mean, um, yeah, good base fitness, keep up the speed work. I'm sure that helps me uh, get, achieve those sort of times. Um, your nutrition, absolutely vital. And, and one of the things I think a lot of people mistakes people make, they'll try stuff in training, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll do what they've done in training, which is all very well. But of course, race intensity and duration is different from training. Mm. And what you can absorb and eat during a, a four hour or six hour training run is entirely different from what you can absorb in a, a 24 hour one. Mm. And this is where I think, this is another factor where I think the speed work helps. I think if you have excess fitness, so to speak, mm. then you basically got cardiac output left over to help your digestion going because when you're all your cardiac output is going to just drive you forwards you've got nothing left for your stomach and to keep your, your mm. digestive tract working right. so if you have excess fitness then basically it helps your digestion and eating and as long as you can and then if mm. you can help your eating then you can keep your energy coming in as long as you keep the energy coming in then keep the energy coming out again yeah um so i, I I'm, I'm absolutely convinced that uh, as a having this fitness in excess of what you think you need yeah. uh, it's just plodding around it isn't going to help your stomach you know mm. you can run for so long on your reserves but you will, when you run mm. out then it becomes yeah. really unpleasant mm. so if you think about that is nutrition because um again the next the second part of this podcast was a chat with james stewart last night mm -hmm. and we were talking a little bit about you know that you've only got if you want to do a long run say once a month from mm. january to may before the race mm. you've only got five runs really yeah. five long ones to practice these uh -huh. things yeah, so what sort of advice would you give to people who are who are thinking about their nutrition and and, and what uh, w what's worked for you in the sense of uh, food that you're able to to, to eat absorb and, and use in a race oh, I'm still learning all the yeah. time John you know I mean every so often I think I've cracked it and then I have a bad race and I'm like, no no I haven't cracked it yet yeah. and uh, I do think that uh, the speed works help but uh, the last thing I used that of my new favorite food uh, the, uh, that Lorna McMillan uh, had mentioned before was uh, condensed milk in a tube um, I used that <laughs> in the Tweed Valley Ultra it's incredibly convenient it's much mm. more convenient than a gel nothing to tear off you know mm. and uh, you just can't be on screw squirt a bit in on you go and um, does it taste I, of anything it t condensed milk condensed milk okay yeah. so you got to like condensed milk, yeah. True. yeah you got to yeah. like condensed milk and yeah. um, it, it, you would think that sounds disgustingly sweet but in fact right. when you're running actually you know your fl your, your taste change and, and and I found it went down well, very well and certainly the Tweed Valley one I, I found my energy levels just stayed up all the way around so I, I had a good run there yeah. and um, so that's my new favorite um, okay um, but presumably it's not just that you'd have a variety of stuff yeah, yeah I mean I think like most people you probably start off with a bit more real food near the beginning yeah. of the race and then move on to the, just, just your sugars and carbs and things that are pure yeah. carbs as you get as, as you go on um, I'm a great fan of milk and milk products in general, the, you okay. know, chocolate milk and milk. And yep. the first thing I want after the race is never, never a beer. It's always mm. a pint of semi skin milk or a p two pints, you know, okay. <laughs> that I'll knock back. Yep. Um, yep. And uh, I crave What about milk. fluid in a race? Would you just have water or do you like using electrolytes, tailwind, or this sort I, of stuff? I tried tailwind once. I think the first sachet tasted fine, second sachet. Sachet, mm. I could not drink, and I had to right. chuck it and fill a refill of water. Uh, and I, yeah, I don't know. It's just one of those things. It's a yeah. personal thing. I, I, I don't like it. Um, I've tried experimented over years with Lucas Age Sport, Coca Cola, and all sorts of things, and they all have their place. And Coke mm. towards the end and later yeah. on the race is, is a great boost, and as is coffee. Mm. Um, so um, uh, next year, I probably will use some. Maybe alternate Lucas A Sport with something with non electrolyte drink, or, or but uh, I haven't really decided yet. And as yeah. I say, I, I feel I really ought to have this quack by now, but I don't. You know, you, yeah. each time you do something, yeah. you keep pe peddling, you know. I know. But as you say, you, you think sometimes, oh, I've, uh, I've, I've found the thing that works, and it works for one race. And as yeah, you say, right. the next race, you do exactly yeah. the same thing, and it doesn't work. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, that's right. So, yeah, it is. Uh, it's very much it, uh, we're still trialing there aren't I we? know I yeah. just just when you think you're getting smart and, no, no 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah okay that's great so let, let's just think about this year then so you've had a good good last good 2017 and moved into 2018 what what, what are your big plans for besides the West Harlem way for this okay, year okay well um, starting off with the uh, same one I said last year John Muir way 50k uh, and it's uh, March I think uh, which is a nice distance just to sort of mm. get going and I said I didn't 
do my long run a month and last year I just did a few races in the build up to it, so they were my long runs mm. so I did the jump your way uh, and then last year instead of the fling I did the North Tyne Trail Ultra which is a similar distance but flatter but just for a change you know yeah. um, excuse me while I check my list because yes. I don't know what I've got to remember what I've got on this year yeah. uh, lots of shorter things cross countries Kirk and Tillich 12.5k Davila Forest uh, jump your way uh, Balmoral 15 mile trail race in April um, Transvolcania is ah, yep, got that in May okay. nice. so looking forward to that so mm. that's going to be altitude and height and heat and stuff yeah. you know, to deal with maybe I mean weather is very variable I'm told so you right. know, it can be scorching it can be cold so that'll be interesting to now, with. how many weeks between that and West Highland Way Oh, I should probably should have looked at that. Uh, well, roughly. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's the twelfth of twelfth of, 12th of, 12th of, of uh, May. Twelfth of May. Trans okay. Yeah, so it's probably six weeks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so doing the Mulgavi, yeah, Mul Mulgavi, Mulgavi <laughs> trail race again. I think <laughs> yeah. uh, when it opens, ten uh, k after that, and the West Highland Way race, and then about a month after, just about six, five six weeks after that, I'm um, doing the uh, Lakeland fifty. Right. So that'll be my first, my first ever trip to the lakes. I, I can't believe I've not done one. Seriously? Yeah, yeah, I've never been to the lakes. Oh, no, what, uh, never at all? Oh, uh, uh, only, only on an occasional holiday yeah, with a right. motor home and stuff like that. But okay. no, no, never, never run up a hill there. Oh, you'll love it. No, you no, will. It's so, a great so, course. Yeah, yeah thought, I, thought I'd get in on the opening when they open the entry and thought, yeah. oh, I'll give it a go then. Yeah. Um, and then my, my big one, well, I say which is my big one. I mean, the West Highland <laughs> Way is the one that is the target that I want. For my, you know, I, I have a goal for. I'll, yeah. I'll, 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 I want my sub 23 mm. and uh, preferably a PB and preferably to beat uh, <laughs> <laughs> Andy Cole. <Yeah>. Um, <laughs> but then I've got the Deadwater in uh, August, end of August, 23rd of August, uh, which is an interesting uh, one. So it's tell us a bit more about right. the Deadwater. Deadwater is yeah. like a wet and cold marathon de sable. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Why anyone would do it is a good question. I wanted to do a stage race. Yep. Uh, it says there were six stages, um, and it starts off by Deadwater north of Kielder, which is just about on the Scottish border. I think Deadwater is actually supposedly the origin of the North Tyne. Oh, right. uh, that's where we started the North Tyne Trail Ultra, mm. uh, run down alongside Kielder, and then basically we work our way down to Chester over six days and various different lengths length stages again model on the marathon de sable with you know several sort of short medium and then one long stage of 60 miles wow. uh, and uh, that's in the middle of that that's six in days. the middle and then you've got two more 30 mile days after that wow. uh, so that that's going to be uh, hard yeah. um, and you've got to carry most of your stuff yeah, with that's you that's right you have to carry your, your sleeping bag your clothes your mat uh, and your food for the first three days they, they will allow you a drop bag generously to okay. have your food for the next three days yeah and i may even go down and bury some food along the way <laughs> <laughs> but I'll uh, I don't know. I didn't, I just, I didn't see any of the rules saying you couldn't do that. Um, so, yeah, I, I've just always wanted to do a stage race mm. like that. And it's also a chance to just share a, an amazing experience with a small group of people. There's only going to be 50 people yeah. doing it. Mm. Um, they put up the tents, provide the hot water and somewhere yeah. to charge all your gadgets each right. night. And the rest of it's up yeah. to you. So... Um, now you were telling me that you're not really a camper. So. No, absolutely not. No, <laughs> my idea of, of camping it involves a motorhome and yeah. flush toilet and, uh, <laughs> and a shower. So yeah, that'll be interesting to see how I cope with that. Yeah. So I, I'm just gradually building up all the kit now. You know, buying the clothes and the mat, and uh, yeah. I need to get myself a sleeping bag and rucksack and all. all and presumably, kind. you want to try and get as light a gear as you yeah, can. Don't yeah, you? yeah, yeah. Uh, within reason. I mean, obviously, there's a price yeah. weight yes. compromise. You, know. Know. <laughs> you can spend hundreds on sleeping bags that yeah. weigh next to nothing. Yeah. But uh, ones that I'll probably never. Well, I may use them again. But. Uh, yeah. And is that all off, mostly off road? Obviously, a bit yes, of road. But, uh, but, yeah, a, yeah. A, lot, a lot of trail. Uh, so you have to navigate your way. You know, I, I should really look, yes. I should really look this up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never like to know everything about a race before I go into it. And I always okay. been reading race instructions. It's one of those things you do the night before, you know. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But you, you haven't planned to any recce runs on the course? Um, to be honest, I don't know when I'm going to have time to do it, you know, because yeah. I've got so many races on and we're going to yeah. go after France for three weeks after West Highland Way because if we don't go away on holiday, my life will not be worth right. living. So I have to do that. Yeah. Uh, and I'm looking forward to that because mm. last year we went after France for three weeks and I just we went to the French sort of Alps and uh, discovered that there's great hills to run up, mm. you know. So <laughs> that, I, I actually got quite a lot of training and on holiday uh, just ran and, and ran up Mont Ventoux when we were in France last year just because uh, you know I have friends who've cycled up it and I thought oh, anybody could cycle up it. 
<laughs> Bob so Watkinson, you... if you're watching, yes, even you can do it. He, <laughs> Bob uh, did all three routes in the day, you know, which is what wow. you have to do if you're really hard. But, okay. but I, I settled for running out once, and yeah. uh, that, that was a great experience. And then you went, you lit to go on the other one. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, that, that 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 kept my fitness well up uh, yeah. over holidays. So. so with this dead water, have you planned to do any back-to-back -back long runs to try and get used to no. running two days, <laughs> two three days on the run? No, I, I, I don't know where the back. I mean, yeah, some people swear by them. I, mm. I'm not not convinced. Um, uh, you know, we're, we're all t t take little bits of sort of things that we've heard about training for things from different mm. sources and mix and match them to what suits us. And I know one chap who was very convinced that, that runs over three hours really aren't that beneficial because after three hours you spend longer recovering from runs than you do getting the benefit. You, if you do keep up to three hours, you can do several of them, you know, a week if you mm. want. But once you start getting too long and back-to-back -back runs, uh, I didn't do any last year. Uh, didn't seem to suffer for it. So okay. um, uh, I, th I think a lot of it, so much of it's in your head if you know you can do it anyway. Mm. Um, Okay. Well, we'll see. So yeah, yeah, we'll see. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I have no. Well, no I'm just thinking it's quite interesting because I think I would say my preparation for Northern Traverse is probably different to what you're preparing for that one. So it'll be quite interesting to, yeah, to yeah. see how we both get on. Yeah, the, yeah, back to back background. You know, just, it just strikes me as a good opportunity to pick up an injury. You know, okay. doing, doing putting your body through a, a big stress. Yeah. You know, like that in yeah. training. Yeah. Um, mm. So. Uh, I, I do love the fact that there's there's so many different ways of, of uh -huh. training, preparing, running these races, aren't there? Yeah. You know, and everyone's. I think you, you you find that you find what you enjoy, don't you? In yeah. the end, yeah, and what, that's what it. suits I you. I mean, the, the, the most important thing I think I did last year was I never went, I never did a run that I didn't enjoy. Great, and, that's uh, brilliant. Yeah. And as I say, a lot of that included hard runs. But you know, as long as I went in with the right frame of mind, I thought, yeah. well, you know. I'm going to run up that hill six times today because I've never done that before, and it's going yeah. to be hard. But I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do that, yeah. and I go up and do that, and, and then, you know, I get a huge lot of dollop as type two fun, yeah. you know, <laughs> as, as Mark Beaumont calls it, you know, yeah. uh, the kind of fun that you only get looks in hindsight, yeah. you know. <laughs> and uh, so, just by always just never going out and think, oh. I need to do some miles, you know, I've not yeah. really done enough miles this week, I need to go out and do another 5, 10 miles. I've, I, I never did that last year at all. I went out in a positive frame of mind that yeah. I was going to do something fun, you know. Yeah. No, it certainly worked. Well, thank you so much Tim, that's yeah, been really done. helpful, it's been great to chat and um, I look forward to following your progress over this year and seeing yeah, how I you Yeah, I shall probably crash and burn spectacularly no, no, now having no, talked to all. you. No, not so, uh, And I wish you all the best for your yes. races. I mean, thank uh, you. It's, it's not been the same without you, with your injury and everything. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I hope uh, we can have a, a decent race head to head sometime. Yes, that'd be good. Um, yeah, not quite. I don't think your schedule. Well, I, I just planned for up until the the, the half most fifty five in the Northern Traverse. Yeah. I just wanted to yeah. see how that oh, goes and see sure, see yeah. what I, I I'll do after that. Uh, yeah. Well, hopefully the magic orthotics and everything. Will yes, I hope so. Job, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay, you very much. Go. Cheers, and John. Thank you.